video we're going to be looking at compositing and hopefully you'll get something from it because I'm doing the video slightly differently this time. It's quite a long one, so let's dive right in. Okay, for this one, I like the finished effect of this image, except that area up there where I've got a slight bleed of red coming into it. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to reverse engineer this and explain most of the processes along the way, just to let you see how the image comes together. And hopefully by doing that, it will allow you to analyse an image and look at it and say, okay, I can see how that's been done or how that's been created or it gives you the thought process of working through from the start to the finish. So we're going to reverse engineer this image and I'm going to talk you through it. First of all, I'm going to turn off that layer and that's a group, that's a group of three effects here which I'll go into later on. I'm going to leave that to last because that's what adds to the image. Then in group one, we are losing some of the rocks here that are in the foreground. And then in group two, we lose everything except for the black background. So I'm going to turn on group two at the moment and then drop that down. And the reason I put them in groups is it allows me to move things back and forward as well. And it also saves desk space. So I'm going to get down and turn all of these off except for the original photograph and I'll talk you through what's happened and we will do that and get down here okay the original photograph as you saw it is this one here and what I've done with this is I've created a mask on it and I've cut it out using the pen tool. If I do that, you can see that that there is the original image. And then I'll unclick that. And then after that, I needed that to be in front of the rocks. So I brought in two rocks and I'll tell you where these rocks came from towards the end. And I put in two rocks there knowing that the light coming down here and the light coming down here was going to work for the image that I was creating. And then after that, I needed to put in the lightning strikes, right? As you can see, they are screen blends. Because it's a dark background, I wanted them screen blended. Below that, I put in the light, but this is actually a fog, as you can see by up here. And that, because of the background color in this, and the blue coming through there with the screen blend, it creates a type of sky effect. So that's that's how that came into being with that one. So that's me had built up the base of the image. Now behind this, because I was going to have light coming out, I needed to put a light in behind it. And so that went in there, which you will also notice is behind these rocks. If I turn them off, you can see the light. I'll go down and turn the light off. So you can see that's just a brush, it's just a normal brush. I'll put these back on. So I'm building up the background first of this and then some rocks in here away in the distance to create depth. Some more up there, some more there, bringing them slightly closer to the, uh, the camera in this case. And the last one being there. So, and you notice that the light from these rocks is working with everything within the image. Yes, this is still blue. The thought process here has changed that in the way back. Then for this one, because it's slightly closer to us, we needed to add that tiny bit of contrast to it. So if I click that there, you can see that there was more contrast added to this. Then we have the bottle. Then 
coming round here to create more depth to so every part of this image we're just looking to create depth with it before we colour it so again some more smoke added some more smoke added at that side but you'll notice that they are in front of the bottle they will be behind it in a second and then a second flare which is behind the, in front of the bottle again now what I wanted to do was bring the bottle here and drop the colour in it You'll notice up here I have the aftershave bottle on its own. How I got that without duplicating this was quite a simple process. If you select the layer and select the mask this time, hold down control and click in the mask, you'll notice it creates a selection. From that, move across to the bottle and then simply go control C, control V. And now I have a copy of it, which I moved up to here. So you'll notice that that's now up here. I also desaturated it and I did the desaturation simply by control and U and pulling the saturation out the bottle. Now that was an afterthought because as you know I shot that in blue first but it works well with this image. So I'm going to delete that layer so that you can see. So we then have that in there. Above that you will notice that I've now created a halo around some of the bottle. How that was created, and you'll notice that it's linked to this, I'll turn that back off and I'll show you how that's created. This icon here actually lets you know that it's been created. So if I double click here, this appears, and now we have inner glow. And you'll see that the inner glow has appeared on this. And we go into inner glow, and it's a linear dodge add, and we can change the size of it, the range of it, everything within this. So I can take, I can bring the size back, and you'll see that disappearing. I can increase the size, and it works well because it's in the linear dodge add. I'll leave it at that for now, just to show you. So if I click OK, it's created an inner glow. If I go down to inner glow and right click, I can choose create layer. And that creates a layer for the inner glow. So you can see it here as well. So if I go into that layer for the inner glow and holding down Alt, click the mask tool, it hides it. So then what do I do? I go over to the brush tool using white. I'm going to take the opacity down just a tiny bit just to show you this. Click once, hold down Shift, paint through. Click once, hold down shift, paint through, and just repeat the process. So you get the idea with that, and you'll notice I've actually got it turned down slightly here as well. You can turn the opacity right up if you wish. It just depends on what effect you're wanting for that. So if I'm going to do that, and then do that, there, to there, there, to there. And if I wanted, which I didn't know because I want the contrast between top of the bottle in there I could have painted along there so that's how you can create a glow in the inside and then adjust it from there I'm going to delete that layer and turn that glow on next in layer 7 you'll see that what I've done again is I've added more glow and a finer glow to that and how that was done was by going on to this layer I'll turn layer 7 off so that you can see going on to this layer 1 copy holding down control, selecting it, going onto that layer, adding a new layer, and then very simply using a soft brush, painting at the edge, holding down shift, and painting through. And you'll notice that when I did that, it was a finer brush that I used to get the final effect. But that's how that layer was created. So I'm going to delete that, deselect, and then delete that layer. So that brought those touches in there. Next, you'll notice that some of them disappear within that one, and that's me just refining it afterwards. So I'll leave that one on for you just to see it just now, because I can mark that one in red, and that was me refining, as I say. If I turn that off, you'll notice I've got a nice glow down here, but yet I decided to change some of it. 
and you can see some of it changing there and that's just done by a hide all mask if I hold down alt there's the mask so we'll put that back on and leave it like that just now then we're bringing everything forward again adding more rocks same idea we then need to tie everything together within this because if we've got rocks coming closer to us there's more contrast in them and normally they'll be darker so this layer here is clipped to that layer and that's simply by holding down alt on your keyboard so i created the brightness and contrast layer which you can see here like so, I'll take it back to 26, as I say, because I like this image. And then just hold down Alt, and you'll notice that on the screen there is a click clip to layer below, but in this case it's remove it because it's already clipped. So that is group one, and that's has built up the image there so far. That was group two, sorry. So group one is just basically putting rocks further in the foreground. So you can see that and then there, and that ties them in, which gives it more depth. I put third ones in, but I opted to take them out. I thought it looked too busy, but we'll see. And so that's that group there. Okay, for the final part of this, and this is the sweet part of the entire image, this is a plugin that's called Honoric, and what it does is it creates these effects. And this is the effects in their simplest form. This is how good it is. So I can do that and then I can add in these effects. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I worked the plugin to get to roughly the same effect as this, but perhaps maybe not that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this group just to show you it from the beginning. So if we drop that in there, and what I'm going to do is go up here and this is the Honoric 2 plugin and I'm going to click new and remember I'm using this in its basic form I'll cover this in another video down the line but this is it in its basic form just now so as you can see it creates a brilliant glow to your entire image and then you can go in and adjust the threshold dynamic range mean opacity the core opacity which I'm going to drop straight away and then I'm going to take down the main opacity and you'll see it's coming back slightly. I'm going to bring back the exposure. And what this does is it creates a, its own layer for you as well. And we are going to, for this, just for the sake of this video, because hopefully by that you can see what it does, I'm going to click save. And what that will do is it will create a new layer in your Photoshop document. So now that we've got this new layer in here, we can play about with the opacity of it and everything just let's say to about there. But we still don't have that blue colour that I wanted, so I'm going to build these up and then edit them. I'm going to turn that one off, go back into group. I don't even have to go back into group, but just to show you this, I'm going to click new. And it's going to create a new one. But this time I want it with less impact, so I'm going to take the core opacity right down. I'm going to take the main opacity right down. And perhaps the exposure down again. Threshold I'm going to draw back slightly, not too much for this. About there. But what we can do now is I can go in and colour this entire image using that as well. So we're going to build it up through this and I'm going to just click colourize. And so you see we get this effect. But I want it in the blue so I am going to go over here and adjust it to that and that's nearer the effect that I wanted when I first edited this I took my time in doing it but you can see there that I can adjust that and everything's in there and I'm quite happy with that and I'm just going to click save and what that will do is once that creates a new layer in Photoshop it will open up both of them again uh, as you will see and then we can tweak it from there. So here we have it and it's opened up both layers. If I turn them off individually, you'll see there. And then we have that one. So you can see that. So we can now play around with these. And I can draw that one back even further to about there. Draw this one back as in the opacity of the effect. Just to about there. 
if it works for my mouse. So we have that as well. So from that, you can see how quickly that, that has created this image here. 72, I can take that back up, push it a bit further, push it a bit further again. Now, I quite like the colour of this. A bit too much in here, as you can see, but if I take that out, it gives me that. So there's too much glare on this image here. So if I simply click the mask and go Control and I, it inverts the mask, allowing me to have greater control of where the glare is going to be. And it's the same with that one. I can hide that on this layer and I can go into the brush, paint in black, into the brush first, paint in black, take that up a bit, just so that the, the text stands out slightly more. Take that right down and just click once. Perhaps even too much at that Z. So I'm going to take that down even further and I'm going to take that down to 16 and increase the brush size. And there we have it. If I click twice there, you'll notice that that's standing out a tiny bit more. I can click a third time so that it stands out further and then maybe choose other areas within the image that I want to stand out as well. Maybe the lid, maybe in there. So that that stands out even further. And that's on this layer. On this layer here, because it's hidden, change the brush to white, keeping it at 16. I can increase the glow in certain areas as well. Now with Honoric, as I say, I'll create a separate video for Honoric, but you can actually do this with Honoric. You can choose your areas that you want to do. Last but not least for this image, I am going to choose a blue and let's go in about more electric than that. Let's go in about there. That might not be enough. Let's take it to there. I'm going to choose that blue there and then I'm going to get down in here and I'm going to add a solid colour. So now we have a solid colour. I'll leave it at that just now and I can go in through all my blend modes to find the one that I want. Overlay looks quite nice and it's adding to the effect. Soft light, prefer overlay but we've got hard light, go down to colour You'll notice the different effects that that has, multiply, everything like that. So even if we quite multiply, I can still go down and turn that down. But that's not a, a kind of good effect for this. So if I get into overlay, 38, and then down there, perhaps I want it more blue. Double click in here, and let's increase the blue slightly to about there. That's going in towards the purples. Let's take it up to there. So you can see your image changing as we go through this. And that's how this image was created. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it's, you like the reverse engineering of the image. I didn't want to recreate the image because I would change it and you do change an edit each time you go for it. So I thought it best to reverse engineer this one. I'm going to be doing more videos like this, uh, compositing videos and back out in the field again. So hopefully you're enjoying what you're seeing so far and what you've seen from this year already. Hopefully the videos are not too long because I do know that too long a video, people lose interest and drop away. So if you think this should be shorter, let me know in the comments below. If you want me to do a full start to finish edit, setting up, lighting, everything, let me know as well. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.